How's it, how's it? The camera manufacturing industry had fed me a lie, which I had swallowed hook, line, and sinker. This had started when I was a beginner photographer and I was trying to figure out what, what is it that I actually needed to get started on this journey with taking images. Over the 30 odd years that I've been taking photographs, you know, both professionally and, and amateur, there was a, a common theme that sort of ran throughout this, which was whenever I got frustrated with photography, whenever I felt myself at like a creative impasse, and you know, I just, I was like, oh, I just, I don't, I'm not, I'm just not feeling it, right? So something's not right. I turned over my shoulder, or turned, you know, and there was the camera industry going, do you know what you need? You need a new lens or you need a new camera or something like this. That's going to be the thing that's going to reinvigorate your photography. As a beginner photographer, this is of course, you know, it's, it's comforting to actually hear because there's so much for you to get to grips with when you're starting off and your journey as a photographer. You know, there's the technical aspects of things. There's, oh my God, you know, the, the f-stops and the, the shutter speeds, and all that gobbledygook stuff, just like, ah, it's just too much. And then, of course, there's, there is the aesthetic side of things, which is even harder because, oh, you know, how do you quantify what is a good or a bad image? And, and then, of course, oh my God, mistakes. I'm making something tangible here. I'm, I'm making a physical object. What if people look at it and, and, and laugh? So no wonder that it's a comforting thought to go, hey, do you know, this camera will solve all of those issues that I don't really want to deal with. But over that 30 years, one of the things has become apparent. And that is that the only thing you really need as a beginner photographer, as, as any kind of photographer, is a willingness to learn. Now that's all well and good, right? A willingness to learn, fantastic, right? So where do you, where do you get started with this? You know, what, what is the thing? So let's break it down into to three sections. We'll start with, you know, actually overcoming the, the, that um, insidiousness of, of gear. And that is understanding that gear is actually, it's just, it is simply a tool. Right, is a tool that has specific uses in different environments. If I give you an axe and a chisel, stand you in front of a big tree and say, listen, chop down the tree, which one are you going to use? You will turn to the axe because trying to chop down a tree with a chisel just, <laughs> I think it's going to be um, futile, even if you are not well versed in the dark arts of lumberjackery, right? This is because over time, without you really knowing about it, you have learned that an ax is more suited to this job. And that's what, you know, these professionals do with their lenses and stuff. They know that they have you know, a lens that does a certain effect that they want, that it becomes intuitive, right? They're not asking all their other friends and stuff, you know, what lens do you think I should use and stuff like that? Because over time they have devoted a proportion of their growth in photography to learning to use the equipment that they have available to its, uh, its maximum effect. As a beginner photographer, you don't need fancy gear, right? It's too much for you, right? All you need, something, something like this, this, this phone, this camera phone, right? that's all you need, the most basic of equipment. But what you do need is a willingness to use it to its fullest, to learn its ins and outs, and then, if it is holding you back. And then if it is not doing something you need it to do, then think about investing in new equipment. Throughout the history of photography, people have had to make images with, I think it's charitable to say, a wide variety of, uh, of cameras, right? Uh, you know, it, it, they are certainly not all of a standard. And if anything blows out the myth, of that it's the gear that makes a photographer. That has to be it. If you look at somebody like Paul Strand, for example, you know, one of the greats of photography from way, way back, right? His cameras were so basic. Then you compare somebody like David Yarrow, modern wildlife photographer, has access to all of the latest and greatest technological marvels that the camera industry can come up with, right? 
But it's not their gear that separates them or, or connects them or whatever, how you want to express that, right? It's the fact that they have been spending time building up their aesthetic of learning to see the world as a photographer. And as a new person to, to any art form or what have you, it's tempting, I think, to look purely at other photographers, uh, you know, because that's what you want to do. So it seems natural. But if you are struggling for inspiration within your own photography, that you are not really seeing other photographers that are quite doing it for you, Go back to the other things that you like as, as visual effects. My own photography, I draw from such a wide pool of inspiration that I'm always adding to, like Annie Leibovitz kind of you know, alluded to, that this hard drive in your head from which you can draw inspiration later on. So I draw inspiration from not just other photographers whose work I've always enjoyed, and of course new photographers who I'm, I'm seeing you know, for the first time, but also from you know, music, from you know, music videos, from, you know, from films that, that I enjoy, from TV shows. The composition and the cinematography in TV and film is such a wonderful resource for, for ideas. And then of course, the, you know, painting. Not just portrait painting, but any sort of visual expression the wider that you have a pool of images, a pool of resources to draw from, then the richer your visual vocabulary is going to be. And if you want to tap into more about how to learn to express yourself visually, then I have a, a course that will walk you through all the sort of what we call the power words of speaking visually with your images. And I'll link to it in the description box below. So these are ways that you can learn about photography, about the aesthetic. The more that you look at things, the more that you're going to understand what resonates with you, what feels natural. And that was something that, you know, to go back to the gear idea very briefly, when listening to Joel Meibert's talk, he mentioned about, you know, lens choices. And he said, the best lens for you is one that feels like it matches your personality. So with all of this idea of, of drawing inspiration for your images from places, find things that match your unique personality. Because when you talk with your personality, then your images have more of your soul inside them. And they're far better and far stronger for that. When you're learning any sort of art, craft, whatever, you're going to make mistakes. You know, you learn piano, blah, 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 blah. oh, it's, it's terrible. But the thing with that is it disappears, right? That is only when you have practiced and your recital is of a standard that you show somebody. Photography, you're showing people your work from almost the word go. What do you think about this? And you're opening yourself up to maybe ridicule. I don't, I, nobody's ever ridiculed my work to my face. So, you know, this, this idea that I labor under that, that somewhere out there, people are laughing at me. It must be a bit of a misnomer, but you as a photographer need to be comfortable with the idea that you are going to make mistakes, that you are going to have things go a little bit wrong, right? And if you find somebody who is happy to give you constructive feedback, then take it, right? But if, if the person's just saying, oh, that's SH1T or whatever, ignore it, right? As hard as it is to do this, just put it to one side. Bob Ross, you know, talked about these happy little accidents on his paintings, you know, and beating the devil out of it and all that kind of stuff. And I, I like all that sort of thing, right? And, and I think that's an attitude to have, is that sometimes you're going to not do what is that you wanted, right? Or you're going to get the image back and you go, that's a mistake. And you're going to kind of delete it or do whatever it is that you do with, with what you consider to be mistakes. And that it is, well, I'm, it's a mistake, sorry, <laughs> right, that you mistake. Because if you're not looking at that image, if you're not revisiting it and going, okay, well, could I do this differently? Why didn't I achieve what it was that I wanted to achieve? Or you look at a mistake, what could 
technically be called a mistake. I think, is that an avenue actually that I could go down? Man Ray and all this solarization and stuff like that. And I think the story goes that I, I think it was Bernice Abbott, maybe, you know, to, she was processing negs in his dark room. I think it was in Paris and the door opened and oh, there was, so that's all technically a mistake, but it turned out to be a hallmark of Man Ray's photography. So always learning, always moving down this journey of photography. This is what you need as a beginner photographer, is a willingness to explore, a willingness to learn, and a willingness to go forward always. Not thinking that the answer to any of your photographic woes is always to be found within the gear. In addition to that course that I offer, teaching you how to see the world photographically. I also offer one-to-one -one portfolio reviews where we can look at your work and, and give feedback about how it can move forward in a direction that feels right for you. To find out more, also click on that link below. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.